Hey y'all, Fee here. It's been a while since I've did a Steel Oats video, and so I thought I would just refresh it out there because there's so many great recipes flying around that thought I'd just uh, pop in and show you the basics real quick. It's super easy. I'm getting the uh, water boiling on the stove right now. There's a lot of ways you can prep steel oats. I like to cook mine. There are uh, the ones where you can soak them in the fridge overnight. Uh, they are a little chewier, maybe nuttier texture. So if you like that, there's tons of uh, recipes out there online for just soaking them in almond milk or water overnight and eating them the next day. I like to prep them and have kind of a, like a week of them ready to go so I can just grab a pre-prepared proportion and put them in my microwave and go. So that's what I'm doing. I'm cooking up like a week's worth of steel oats. Uh, I just, I like the organic ones. This is kind of a common one that you can find at the store. It's pretty pretty super easy. You get four cups of water, like so. I've got mine boiling, so I'm looking a little uh, a home show here for you. This is kind of what that measure looks like. And the weird thing about steel oats is they kind of have, they're a different grain. So cooking them with filtered water or reverse osmosis water like I have here is the best way to go because they kind of get some kind of green film on them and it's just the way the grain and the germ is in the oat. So best to use filtered or uh, the reverse osmosis water so you don't see that green slimy stuff. It isn't going to hurt you, but it's definitely better not having that on it. So that being said, go for the filtered or the RO water. It's one cup dry measure to your four cups of boiling water that's going on my stove here right now. So once it gets to boiling, I just dump in the oats. And this is a key here. You want to turn your temperature on your oven all the way down to like three and a half. And I'm sorry. I do not have the knobs on my stove, I have the push thing. <laughs> so anyway, I just dump those oats in, turn it down to three and a half, and then wait for 30 minutes. Just let it simmer, kind of stir it here and there. And then once it comes out, we'll come back and do more video on that. I'm going to dump it into this little glass loaf pan, just like a Pyrex loaf pan here. And that's where I'm going to cut my proportions so that I can pop them out each day and warm them up. and. Once uh, those come out, we'll talk about flavors. I mean, gingerbread cookie, all natural spice. There's a chocolate donut spice. I've seen uh, a couple of the girls in the group doing the chocolate and the peanut butter mixture. So there's a PB2 powder. Um, my favorite go-to, which you'll see, is basically cinnamon sprinkle and a half a chopped apple. And then I put water in it to nuke it and go. I've been doing that for years. And it works, and it's a belly buster. So stay tuned, we're gonna come back with after I get it done, and I'll show you how it goes in and the proportion thing as well. Okay, friends, I'm back, and there's a very bright glaring light over here, so I'm gonna try and stand back here. The cooking is done uh, with the oatmeal. I'll flash this to you a little bit. This is uh, what I did. I put it in the loaf pan, and I made it into portions. Just cut it with a knife down the middle. There's about six there-ish. Um, and according to the colored container program, if you're following that in my group, uh, ask me if you have questions about it. Uh, one of the yellows is about, about a third of a cup, give or take. And so that's kind of roughly what these are. And I basically dig one of these sections out, put it in a bowl, and about a two-thirds cup of water. You kind of got to play with that to see what consistency you like in your oats in the morning. And then I nuke it for a minute and a half. That's it and I mix my mixins in, and the options are really endless here. It's whatever you like. Like I said, my big mix is the oats, half of a chopped apple. I like Fuji and Gala's. They're kind of my faves because they're not real sweet apple because I can't do a lot of sweet. It's not in my DNA to have a lot of sweets. I'm hypoglycemic. So that's kind of my standby. I also will put in uh, about a couple I don't know, teaspoons of ground flax meal. You can see that. And most of my options are organic here because I try to consume things that, uh, or excuse me, I try to buy organic for things that I consume a lot. Uh, just so we try to keep the pesticides and chemicals down and all of the GMOs and everything else. Um, I'm a product of the 70s, come from the hamburger helper stage, packaged everything. So that really didn't help me have babies. So the organic route did, it's keeping chemicals out of my body, so that's what Fee does. All right, so I also try chi every now and again. So some chi seeds, those are always really good for, you know, inflammation. We have inflammation out there. 
Uh, if you aren't into apples, there's frozen fruits like strawberries. Um, I enjoy frozen peaches on it sometimes. So lots of options here, but I think some of the funnest options that you've been seeing lately in the group are the flavorings. So I always put cinnamon on mine. So it's apple, cinnamon, flax seed, and the oats and the water. So I nuke the oats and water first, and then I put the toppings on, and I mix it all up and eat it. But these are great too. So you got a chocolate. This is an all natural flavor, uh, flavoring by Flavor God. You can look him up online, www.flavorgod.com. And be careful when you get in there. It's seriously dangerous because there's so much good stuff in there. This is the gingerbread cookie one. I'm going to try this one. I haven't tried it on my oats yet. I'm excited about that. I had the PB2 out earlier. That's a, a, a powdered peanut butter. You can use natural peanut butter if you want to. And some people are just throwing their good old Shaco scoop in there. You know, if you don't want to mix it up and put it into a recipe, drop it in your steel oats and pack your Shaco and your breakfast all in one and just do it. There's a chocolate flavor there too. So those are options that you can do with your oats on the go. You could even mix them up in there ahead of time. So you can just pop them out as you want to. Some people like to kind of play with their flavors every day so they just make them plain like that and flavor them up as they go. Folks, these steel oats are belly buster foods. If you're wanting to get rid of this middle tone, I mean, I had 50 to go after I had my kids. I know that's crazy, but it can go, it can go away. And if you eat these kinds of things, and even if this is one of the first things you start with, it's one of the best choices you can make, especially to start trimming out your tummy and making those exercises that you're doing every day count. This is the stuff. This is where I started. I wasn't perfect at this. I didn't do my best. I tried, uh, but this helped me start wanting to do more. You know, baby steps. Start with breakfast, get it right. And if you can keep breakfast and lunch and then dinner, everything starts to follow as you start to feel this energy that Whole Foods is gonna give you. You get those bad sugars and stop messing with your brain. That's what those sugars do. They start talking to your brain and telling you that you need another coffee or you need another granola bar because that's what sugars train the brain to do, to look for that short-term energy. So if you start getting this Whole Foods in and stuff like this, you're gonna be much better for it. All right, friends, we'll see you in the tube. Thanks for watching.